Hey guys, Randy Clark here uh, at the Wellness Way, uh, Dr. Ryan Davison's office. I, we met last week, talked a little bit about leg length, now we're gonna go into his office and start talking about a little bit more. So, um, is to get the, the leg length thing worked out. Mm -hmm. Let's figure that out. I brought some info, um, just kind of, just the real simple stuff. This is stuff we give when we're giving, telling people how to take x-rays. Yeah. Um, that's like the, the rundown, that's like the checklist. Um, of how the person needs to stand and where the beam needs to be and all of that sort of stuff. Um, this, here's some info, there's a the picture I'm looking for. Um, this is really kind of a pictorial representation of putting the horizontal beam right at the top of the trochanter. Trochanter, yeah. Um, so we've got to line that up right to the, the head of the femur, really. Um, so just above the trochanter. Um, this is stuff that she does to make sure that the bucky tray is level and that the floor is level. And you can see they even put a little block between the feet to make sure the feet are the right width apart sure. because one of the things that we're really trying to put the feet right underneath uh, the hips, so the center of the foot right underneath the center of the hip, because if it's too wide in their sway or too close in their sway, it'll, it'll mess with the actual height uh, measurement. Right. So if they're, they're right underneath, even if you sway, it won't mess with the height measurement because really we're only going to see from here up. Um, we got to make sure everything below there is is situated the right way okay. um, so that we can be accurate. That um, distortion is killer. Yeah, the distortion uh, is like huge. Can... Now, if we go into this, and this was this, uh, I, this is other stuff I brought for you. Um, Are we actually going to measure the unit and make sure yeah. everything's level today? Yeah, I mean, I actually didn't bring my level. I have a level. Do you? Know, since we, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I would love to do that. This is just an April, about every, once a year I go and I, I print out the latest in leg length research. Okay, nice. Um, and so these are just the abstracts on, on leg length that are in the last couple of years. Um, and then, more important for us, coming down to, 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 to here, um, radiographic assessment of limb length discrepancy. Um, here's a, actually three different ones. They talk about what we're doing here and how reliable it is compared to bone scan and, and all of that sort of stuff. Sure. Um, so it, it's gold standard is bone scan. Bone scan. Bone scan is gold standard. Um, this is plus or minus a millimeter. Yeah. So it's within compared to what people come in with. Yes. I mean, if you're yeah. talking 17 yeah. millimeter. Yeah. yeah. It, it, ah. it, and that's that's the, I mean, and actually, if you read these, they go they usually re recommend the radiograph. Sure just because the lack of radiation, less radiation. Yeah. There you go. Good. So this we, is wider. That's wider than, than we'd want. So we'd make that template that we normally make. Get the, get, put your feet about that wide. If you're a male, your pelvis is pretty narrow. A little bit more. Let's see how that works. Um, good enough. Um, so, good so there would be greater trochanter. We'd want to go ahead and put the line basically right at the bottom of your belt loop. Would be my landmark, right, for you. Um, let's see what we got here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to give us a little bit, and film wise, I'd probably bring this up a notch. Yeah, I mean, you, once you lower this down, yeah. then bring that up a notch. You can, you can put this where you were saying. Uh, where's the reverse and Mr. Oh, that's on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you'd want to line it pretty much right through the, just above your fingers, yeah. really, what I want. And then you can, you would line up on those two dots and pretty much okay. about in the middle. Yep. Yep. Right there. That hits pretty good. Like oh. that. And my two forward left or right? Um, so, the other thing I would do is I'd actually have you touching the film, so it'd kind of yeah. slide back a little. Um, so that what the touching the film does is it you eliminates some of the rotation because oh, okay. we're actually squaring you up to the film, sure. right? So I just that that doesn't allow the patient to rotate uh, when you do that. Sure. The other piece is so I'd actually take a look at your knees um, because we just want them on the same plane, basically. Uh, if you look down, I don't know what you're doing there. Um, if you look down, I don't know if you can see your knees, but can you see that your left knee is out in front of your right? Mm -hmm. So we really need those on the same plane. So either bend a little, it's like you're hyperextending the right one a little bit, like there. Okay. 
um, that actually puts them, there we go, now we're on the same plane. Oh, hold on, those toes are in front of those. Okay, yes, yeah, so if you can get the, get the toes on the line, and then, yeah, now let's bring that knee out to about my hand here, so, uh, um, there you go, there you go. Okay. Because, yeah, you're hyperextending that one just a little bit, there we go. Um, so that would be the picture right there. Okay. I don't know how you take a picture, but now I've got you in the spot. Basically, what I want to do is I want to measure the difference in height from okay. this to that. Done. I can tell you how to do that. Okay. So we do an extended line, the top of the femur, right? Yes, top of the femur. Then we go straight across. Straight across, so good. It's basically a horizontal yep. level, and then we can measure that. But then that's what we want to do. Let's zoom in a little. Oh, that's not the right tool. There we go. Let's zoom in, right, to make a yeah. measurement really yeah. a lot more precise on that. Yep. There. Yeah, somewhere like that. Around there. So plus or minus eight millimeters there. Yeah. Um, it's what we're looking at. Um, so now let's zoom back out again. Okay. So there was a slight rotation. Um, and the way I can tell that, I'm looking at the pubic symphysis right here and the center of your um, sacrum, mm -hmm. and they're not lining up. So the only way to really do that is to cockeye it just a little bit, and might have been because we were bending that knee yeah. to even them up that you may have, and we we're bending the right knee, right? So it's actually shortening this side, so it actually, when you're locking the knee back, it actually makes that a little bit bigger. See the um, difference in the eye yeah, here? Yeah, you can see that, that one. Yep. Which? Slight, yeah. slight, not a lot. And then the width of the um, ilium here yeah. versus that one, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so mean, there's definitely rotation. It's, I don't know if it's, if it's, you know, gross rotation, or right. if it is in just if it, right. that left ilium is rotated. It could be like, a, like an in flare of the ilium as yeah, well. It could be an eye um, in on that side or yeah. something like that. Something going on there. But if we, so can I draw a vertical line up? We're at. Uh, let's just do it from center of the sacrum here. It's kind of fine. You want to go from in here? Yeah, right there, right in the middle spot of the sacrum would be great. And just go vertical. Okay, here we go. So that gives us a nice grid um, to, you now you can see that, but you can also see how much this, of the spine goes, mm -hmm. goes off to that side, which is the low side, which would make sense as you drop down That's the most um, common way. on that left way, that it's gonna, like the whole pelvis is gonna basically do the same thing. Cause I mean, I can just eyeball it and tell you that the crest of the iliums oh, yeah. I wonder are, if those are, even too. are off by a bit. Um, Not that it matters. Yeah, but, no, but it, it's a good kind of eyeball. Oh. It does all different angles. <laughs> there we go. And then a quick little... Yeah, just kind of... That's probably in the same ballpark at nine, yeah. eight, nine millimeters. Um, just sure. Just off the chain. Um, and so at eight, that, that's enough. That's mm -hmm. enough to start to create something. Um, and so what we would do in a situation like this is just go to your left shoe, um, insert something into that left shoe, bring this up, and then sometimes, and, and this might be interesting for you, just because you have access to this and all of that, mm -hmm. um, is that have you walk around on it for a month, do that sort of thing, be really consistent in it. We do another one of these with the lift in, and let's see what your spine's doing. Sure. Right? And yeah. let's see what's going on. Um, that sort of thing. Now, your, you had more of a low back mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. but that was your chronic piece, yeah. um, was low back. Absolutely. Um, so this, it, was it left side, right side? As far as the, the uh, pain. Was it off center really at all? It's right on L5 spinous and then the SI joints. Okay. You know, are just very so if we look at this, I mean, certainly there's much more openness to this. Right there, you can see it like closes up almost entirely. <laughs> I'd say you got you SI, SI, and then no SI <laughs> right there. Yeah. Um, the high side, the sacrum has a tendency to want to counteract that, right? So so if the whole pelvis, I don't have pelvis with me, but the whole pelvis would go like this, the sacrum has a tendency to want to try to correct. Sure. And so that upper portion on the high side gets compressed. It gets binded up there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That that's sense. that's where that would get compressed is right there. Uh, and so you can see, I mean, you're young, you're healthy, all that stuff going on. You do a good job with your toxins, right? <laughs> um, so you're You've done okay. Structurally, though. But structurally, there's a piece that, yeah. that could, and this is something, 
uh, one of the principles we talk about is that gravity will always win, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, gravity is, is <laughs> has never lost. <laughs> um, and so, so eventually this, this compensation that you're making for yeah. this, you, you get chronic SI joint pain. If this curve, as it comes up, at some point it curves back, right? At some, you're, you're not standing crooked. Right. So at some point that's going to curve back. And where it curves back, there's going to be more compression on the right side of the vertebrae than there is on the left. Mm -hmm. That causes a disc issue where sure. the disc wants to go the other way. So long run, right, up the chain, you start to see some of these things and people are like, I picked up a pencil and I herniated my disc, yeah, right? Like, they're, and, they're <laughs> perplexed. Like, yes. How in the world why, did that Why did that happen, right? And it's because this pressure over time starts to Absolutely. build. Yeah. Um, and I talk about the alignment and your car tires. If your car tires, you know, yeah. you spend a thousand dollars on car tires. Oh, yeah. You go and get them aligned. <laughs> if you don't get them aligned, are they going to last you the sixty no. thousand miles? No. Why they all wear out on the left side, not the right side. Right side. Yeah, that's exactly it's, what's going on. Here. It's common sense. Um, you know. And so, so yeah, I mean, and and. Some other kind of side benefits, and I know you do some working out and things like that. Um, our athletes, mm -hmm. when we start to correct this, they're immediately stronger. Yeah. Um, just and that goes to the chiropractic piece of when the joints are lined up, they they transfer force better. Yeah. Uh, right, and that's really what it is. We we've got professional athletes that come back and are like, I did my PR that day. Right, like that, that day I came in and I was already doing my PR just by lining up the spine and, and getting it in the right the spot. The muscles are stronger, absolutely. Which is what chiropractic preaches all the time, right? right? So you, yeah, so in, but, but you adjust, you adjust, you adjust if you don't, if you don't address this piece. Mm -hmm. As soon as you stand up, gravity's gonna be like, boop. Yep. And, and you're gonna go right back. So this is a piece that, that we find in cases like yours, especially catching it when you're this young, mm -hmm makes a huge difference down the road. Sure. Um, this is one that uh, Jesse and I actually were having a conversation this morning about hip replacements. And, okay. and we were like, at least 90%. I could prevent at least 90% oh. of hip replacements um, by, because it's just a wearing down of the hip. It is. That's all it is. There's no disease. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a wearing down of the hip. And if you can get that sucker lined up, it won't wear down. Weren't you talking about the high hip? Yeah. Is normally the one, is that, the one uh, that wears out. And you can, you can kind of see it here, just the shallowness. It's, I mean, yours isn't terrible, but it's there. This one actually sits deeper in the socket. If I were to draw a straight line down, you would see where it hits here, and it hits here. There's a lot more exposed on that side. Um, so you can, you can already see there's just, and, and I, I mean, you'd have to really zoom in, but we sometimes measure mm -hmm. what's, mm -hmm. what's the gap there, and you'll, nine times out of 10, that high side's narrower than the, than the low side. It's just, just the way it goes. Um, and so, so yeah, this is, this is great stuff to look at. So would we, would we measure the leg, the actual femur length? So this, this, the way I set you up, mm -hmm. all I have to do is measure this because I've taken away all the, all of the okay. stuff below, which is why I lined up your knees and I put you on the arches. And I did all of that. I, I kind of eliminated anything but joint compression, which, which joint compression, eh, half a millimeter, depending maybe, on the wear. If yes, but being right. younger, being younger, and all of that stuff, we're not really concerned about that. Got it. Um, and because we know this is plus or minus a millimeter, it, it's kind of within the range anyway. Uh, so what we would do is, I didn't bring it with me, but I would I would take a, a lift kit put eight millimeters under there, do some measurements with you, mm -hmm. make sure everything was lining up the way it should. We don't always end up with that, depending on the person. Right. It might be seven, right? It might be nine that mm -hmm. they do better with. Um, because there is a, a, a little bit, this just gives us, okay, we know one way or the other, it's gonna be there. So I'd actually test you in seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. We'd figure out where you do best, stick you in there. And there are times, you're younger, it's not as big of a deal. On an older person, I might start at six. We sometimes so go a little jumping. bit lower. Yeah, I think even right? five was like even good, five. Yeah, right. I, I, I that we start a little bit lower, and then as their body adjusts, we kind of go up until we get to the height. Sometimes we never reach eight. Sometimes you know six right. is as high as they can go. But and we'll play with that. Each body is different. Right. So we'll play with that a little bit. But we're but the idea is to get this as close as possible. Mm -hmm so that I can take as much pressure out of here as I can and as much pressure out of here as I can. Now could you put eight millimeters in, mm -hmm. 
roughly. Yeah. Take this X-ray and expect the femur heads to be yes. as level as can be. Yeah. It would be that. Yeah. It, it, assuming the X-ray is accurate, not your floor and all that, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah. say it was six, yeah. uh, or this eight went down to, and it was only one millimeter, yeah. plus or minus. Yeah. One. Like that would be that'd be great. Say yeah. it was above by a millimeter yeah. or below. Doesn't right. matter. You could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and and that would be immediate. That's you could cool. do that today, right? You could slide eight in there and just do it, and. And you should see that. Now you may not see all the, the no, no, changes no. up here because that's going to take over some time. time. You'd be able to over see that. Over time, you'd see those changes. Yeah. So you've done you've done before and afters as well um, got as I many. Mean, yeah, that's many. exciting. That's and great. you want to know the most exciting thing? <laughs> um, children, uh, when they're growing, if you can catch this, they often catch up. Okay. So we've had them as high as like 16 millimeters. Wow. And you correct it, and if they're consistent with it. You'll see it go down. Now it's twelve. Now it's ten. Okay. Now it's six. Right. And and it comes down. So when they become adults, they don't have that huge. They're, we've gotten them down to zero. That's awesome. Um, from something like that. That's great. Now it doesn't always happen. We don't. And that's. I don't know. The answer is I don't know why it doesn't always happen. Um, but a lot of the times, if you can catch them early, you can get that to where when they they stop growing, when those growth plates fuse. Mm -hmm they're at a much closer level sure. to where maybe they don't need it all the time. Makes sense. Right, that sort of thing. Um, you, your growth plates are gone, right? Yeah. You're, oh, yeah. you're, you're not getting any taller, sorry. Nope. Nope. Sorry about that. Um, but but it's, that's, just, that's how it's gonna be. Um, and so, so you're, this is you the rest of your life, right? You've got eight millimeters for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, but knowing about it now, you don't need the disc herniation or the hip replacement or the you know, yeah. SI joint wearing out. Good point. Right? We don't need any of that other stuff. And you already tested to see if mine was functional. Right, we did that in the office, right? Right, is to test that out. And, and functional doesn't, the idea again, if you look, that's why I gave you the paperwork, all that protocol on how to do it, right. it takes away functional. Okay, okay. It takes away functional. Um, is the there only way to try and see if something, you know, doing work with it, specific adjustments or yeah. muscle work Absolutely. or whatever, and see if that A could go to Five, yeah, maybe, and yeah. just see. Oh no, absolutely, what? and we've done that before. And then say, okay, this is about as far as what I think you could get. With eight, I haven't seen a lot of change. Okay. Um, at 15, 16, 17, Makes sense. we actually do the, the functional stuff. Does help some. Gotcha. It does seem to get it down. Okay. Um, the one, the smaller numbers uh, doesn't. I don't see a whole lot of change okay. on. But I've had them. Like I had a a person who was sixteen and did some functional work, did some stuff. We got her down to 11 like this. Okay. I mean, it was really, really quick. Um, and so it made a five millimeter difference. It just like that. The younger the, the patient is, yes. probably the easier. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's for most things. Yep, yep. But sense. no, I, I think this is this will be an answer and I'd love to work with you on like adjusting that. And I mean, you have the facilities to look at it. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see with equipment, like, We'd have to almost mark on that floor because I don't trust that floor mm -hmm. a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, like you move over just a little and it could completely change, <laughs> right? Yeah, because um, my right side was the side that was on the higher side of the ridge. Yes, And the left side was. was a little lower. But the film was also higher yeah. on the left side than the right side. So that's why I don't know. Um, we, you know, short of, of changing that equipment, we have a place that you can be 60 inches back and the floor is level True. and it's level and we could check we could check it that way. And if we did it the same exact way, just right. like one that you it know would, is perfect. It would be, be interesting. interesting to compare. I would be yes. definitely wanting to do that. Yeah, <laughs> that that for you would also give you some Absolutely. ideas of, of what might be going on there um, as compared to something we know is, is accurate and we've tested. Yeah. Um, but this is great. This is so, really good for you to come in here and do this. No, I appreciate you letting me come in. Yeah. This is awesome. Um, so, uh, what I would do, um, you know, yeah, game plan wise, well, real quick, would be, say this was the final. You're like, yeah, okay. this is what I think yep. it would be. Yep. What would you go? What would you do from here? So eight millimeters. Eight millimeters is for a guy is right on that edge okay. of whether you can slide it in the shoe or you got to build up the shoe. Okay. Um, there's really two ways to do that. One is an insert. You just take it in your okay. shoe, slide it in your shoe. The those. other is is to build up the shoe. I've got, you know. It's hard to see there, but that, wow. okay. all right, that is a built-up shoe. Um, what they do is they cut the bottom off the shoe, put this, I mind six, 
put six millimeters in, put the bottom back on the shoe. Mm -hmm. um, you never know it's there. That's awesome. That's uh, great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and there, there are shoemakers, like real shoemakers, <laughs> that will match colors and patterns, and, and you know, wow. you'll never know it's there. Cool. Um, and so and so for me, because I just like the room in my shoe, because the, the more you put in, the tighter it is on your toes, and it just bothered my toes for a little bit. Um, and so, so I still have a six millimeter insert that I use on my my tux shoes, right? The ones I wear twice a year, yeah. right? Like, like that kind of stuff. I don't bother building those up. I just slide it in and wear it that sure. night. Um, but the ones I wear every day, yeah. I have it built in just because of comfort. Uh, so I've got flip flops, I've got uh, mm -hmm. running shoes, and I've got a black and a brown that I've gotten yeah. built up. Always built up. Okay. Yep. Cool. And then I just, that's, that's what I wear. Okay. Uh, makes a huge difference. So, so what else could a clinic do for just maintaining so or balancing or, you know, what, what else we would nice? end up doing at that point is um, once that is corrected, I would do that whole measurement I did of you. Sure. I would end up doing that again after you walked around about a, 10 days to two weeks. Okay. I would do that whole measurement again, see which parts of your, your body corrected themselves right. and which parts didn't. Cool. And it's the parts that didn't that we would end up helping to, to balance that out at that point. Because okay, cool. um, if it's going to do it itself, I'm not going to work. I don't want to work that hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like let let gravity do its thing. Let it do it, you know. And then whatever whatever's holding on, whatever might be stuck, maybe like this SI joint will be stuck, right? That's a possibility. Sure. Um, and so we'd have to do some SI joint mobilization and, and open yeah. that up. And we had a temporal. We had you had yeah frontal bone. Frontal yeah, bone frontal bone was like, off. Yeah. So there might that might correct itself, but it might not. I. You never know, right? Like that's why you just let it happen and then come back and remeasure and compare it to that first chart and go, okay, what's going on? And what you don't want to see is even something atlas too. Yeah, I mean, we're even atlas. About that. Yeah, that's... even something that like one of the ways you know you gave them too much lift is new distortion shows up. Okay, Good right. Point. Something you know, didn't have before now you do. Okay, that might be too much. We gotta we gotta back that yeah. off a little bit, yeah. right? Um, okay. And so we do measure for that to make sure your body's not getting worse. Like that's the last thing we want to do is make you worse. So what we would end up doing is, you know, yeah, put that in, try it for a couple weeks. That's why I don't even have them build up their shoes for the first couple weeks. Right. Just do the insert, right? Um, because I want to see, we might change it in two weeks, right? Like we might, might tweak it a little bit. Um, and so, and, but once we get to a point where I'm like, okay, we're pretty confident this is it. Go ahead and get the shoes done, do all of that. Okay. Um, and then, and then, yeah, like we'll see that SI joint might open up, might not, yeah. uh, don't know. Um, right. But we should be able to see that because what will happen is this crest of your ilium measurement won't change the way that it should. Right. Um, or you or I'll see your spine still going way off to mm -hmm. the side. I'm like, okay, something stuck there. Let's see if we can mobilize that. And that's where the more functional and actually chiropractic would do a great job sure. of doing that as well. Mobilizing joints is what you guys do. Yeah. Um, and so that might be a great, like your adjustments will hold substantially longer. Oh, I guarantee they will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what we're trying that to do. Sense. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Cut off a little at the end, I know, because we ran out of space in the phone. Sorry about that. Uh, but we'll do more of these. Just leave your comments below. Tell us what you want to hear. Uh, ask your questions and we'll answer them. All right, talk to you soon.